Samantha, are we ready to roll? Yes. Okay. I don't think we're going to have any more. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, so welcome to the second game of the Wee Wee Doubleheader. You can see I'm I'm looking forward to baseball season in a few weeks. Although Los Alamos doesn't have a team, and uh, uh, let's see, you heard we see me this morning. I mean, I could add a few things. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he he really works both sides of the astro and plasma kind of boundary, and he seems to have a fixation on reconnection and he perseveres in that field despite the characters in it, which is something that you can say. He also loves to convert all problems into a jet problem, I've noticed over the years. And you, you saw some of that this morning too. But we, you know, recently he's been, he's gotten into a new phase of asking some hard questions about assumptions. And that's the subject of today's talk on the nature of fluctuations in compressible NHT turbulence. So thank you, Pat. Um, thank you for doing all this <laughs> hybrid mode. Samantha, is that possible to? Move that far away, or what, what do you see on your screen? If you go to more, it looks far. good on my side. Oh, okay. Right. So, this, this is a topic, um, like Pat mentioned, we're trying to go more fundamental. Um, it, it deals with the, the long standing question uh, uh, on whether we get waves in the turbulent system. I remember when I fresh out of grad school, it was the Gordon conference, uh, you know, well eating lobsters uh, with some senior members in the plasma community. I popped this question to them and saying, um, can I treat fluctuations as ensemble waves? Um, there was silence from the other side. Um, I was concerned I asked the wrong question, but uh, turns out it's a harder question than, than I thought. Um, to address. Um, so this is what this is actually a paper. Uh, Song Ming Dai is the first author uh, and that's uh, published in FJ uh, this year. So it's, uh, I think it's already in print. Uh, Zhao Ming and Shang Rong are our collaborators in the Mexico consortium. And Song Bei Du, who's a postdoc with us uh, at the lab. So compressible MIT turbulence. Uh, here I listed about uh, four examples on the upper left. It's the um, it's the uh, sort of in situ measurement. That's typically the way it's presented. Horizontal axis is a frequency. Vertical axis is a fluctuation power in my fields and uh, B squared. And you typically see this uh, three rim, three top, three behaviors that all look like parallel. At the low frequency, presumably in some sort of driving range, you have a lot more, more power energy than inertial range and the, process, uh, the, the kinetic range. And there you see uh, magnetic field fluctuation and density, flu velocity fluctuation and density fluctuation, which is something uh, of interest to us with physics, all three quantities. Um, but the density in particular, uh, because it, it deals with how to damp the energy uh, when you have density that could lead to shocks in you know, Landau damping in plasma and to, to structure formation and, pla uh, and planet formation in some cases, object formation. And then uh, on, the, on the upper right, that's, uh, I think this is a figure made by Ben Changren years ago. Um, uh, you know, I kind of put in the practice on the probe, if you know it, look carefully over there. And, uh, you know, the idea is that the, the sun uh, emits a solar wind, and Parker uh, just, I guess, just passed away last month. Uh, um, you have the wind, then you have various fluctuations. And here, if you do wave particle interaction and possibly wave coupling with turbulence that different resonance parameters decay instability, resonance of multi waves interacting together, producing 
those waves and turbulence, I guess, in this language. And the part of the solar probe now has a chance to actually do research for measurement close to the sun, getting up, getting close to less than 10 solar radius. And the idea, the hope is that you actually do see across the affinity point where and the sonic point where the wind actually accelerates becomes supersonic, super affinity. And so that's very exciting. And the plasma beta is getting lower and lower as you get closer to the sun. At the lower left, so that's in the stellar medium. This is a, one of the uh, false color picture. Um, again, the idea is that those are magnetized, partially ionized medium where uh, density fluctuations are very high. And sometimes you, you run into low beta region as well, which would, uh, would produce uh, lots of fluctuation in, in all quantities. And then on the lower right, this is a, a figure called Faraday rotation measure of a big galaxy cluster. So this is this is 10 kiloparsec. So you have 10, 70, 80 kiloparsec Faraday rotation measure indicating the interstellar medium is in, intro cluster medium is magnetized. And uh, they have patches, which suggest that uh, they are actually turbulent uh, uh, intro cluster medium ICM. What's also interesting, and this was uh, what I did with Stern Colgate, uh, that it turns out if zero is that yellow and you have big patches of, um, of uh, one sign of the plots and big patches of another sign of the plots negative here, which suggests uh, whatever the turbulence in the intercluster medium is doing to the magnetic field, uh, it could, for some strange reason, uh, make very large coherent masses that um, that's very hard, to, uh, very difficult to explain. Now, um, but the, the question kind of stayed with me all for the past almost 30 years. Um, the, um, as far as I know, the space community maybe was the first community that paid a lot of attention to MIT turbulence and the interplay between uh, now this Pat sitting in the audience, uh, maybe the fusion community is the first one. I, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, but uh, but I read a lot of the uh, space community paper, uh, papers where they talked about slab model plus 2D structure. On um, isotropy was was realized more maybe earlier by, by those folks, and they are thinking about compressible energy turbulence. Um, Perhaps earlier than the fusion community. Yeah, fusion never focused, spoke, spoke particularly on, um, never did much on, on say, that either side. It's not really relevant. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, but nonetheless, the question persisted. Um, um, the, the, the turbulence, uh, the astrophysics community is very interesting, obviously, because it, they have long standing consequences on a long, large number of mysteries in astrophysics. Um, cosmic ray generation transport, for example. The cosmic rays propagate through the galaxy, they get scattered by interstellar turbulence. And while cosmic rays presumably also exist into a cluster medium, they get energized and transported. And uh, there, are, there are also self generated turbulence near the shocks. And, and, and just there's this interplay between turbulence and the charged particle energization transport has been long standing. And part, actually, part of my thesis work was involving general uh, stochastic uh, particle energization through turbulence. Um, Back in the days uh, when I was in grad school, the anisotropy, although was realized by space community in the late 80s, um, it wasn't really propagated uh, into uh, astro community. Um, and you know, people talk about stochastic particle acceleration through gyro resonance, the right down the gyro resonance condition, that's the top equation there. You typically invoke some kind of power law in turbulence uh, energy density at the function of K. And then you do all the focal plant coefficients to compute for the for the uh, diffusion coefficients and momentum and pitch angle from which you get energization rates and you get uh, diffusion loss through some some diffusion times through some medium. 
And the trip here, you know, you kind of assume the turbulence to be, to be isotropic and the ensemble of waves that satisfy either our fin dispersion relation that the top layer you will replace it by our fin waves, about fast modes or slow modes and all that. And so there's kind of two assumptions uh, that turned out to be very, very critical. One is turbulence isotropic in K. The second is that there are essentially the ensemble of different waves and you assign power to different fractions and then you carry out all the of the fossil plant coefficient derivation, and you get from which you do get stochastic energization. That sounds reasonable, except, I mean, the, um, you know, astrophysicists went very far. Right? So they write down three couple of equations here. The energy, the, uh, the particle evolution equation on the left side, you know, you have the first order processes, uh, energy gain and loss, Second order diffusion process in momentum space due to interaction with turbulence. And then uh, the middle equation there, second equation there is the, the turbulence evolution, which I've written here in, again in the diffusion form in K space. That has, that's a big D there. And then they damped by interacting with particles. And then you could have some sort of injection at large scale. And then the third equation, third and fourth equation is describing the uh, photon transport. This is not so physically care about radiation. So you have a, a photon flux in a particular energy being that evolution that comes from time is either uh, done by some scattering away process or scattering in inverse content into that energy bin. You could also have uh, net emission and net absorption and escape. So you 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 do you do need the particle information in the photon equation, which comes from the first equation. The second equation, the damping term, is uh, talks with the particle, and uh, the first equation, the energization depends on the both the uh, energization and cooling depends on both the uh, the part of the wave spectrum and also photon cooling spectrum. So you have this three equations that couple them together. Right, right now, uh, in those equations, we didn't do any spatial dependence. It was time and energy, so it's a zero, it's a one zone or zero D model. And the idea is that you take a emission cloud over here. Uh, you have particles get energized because the turbulence cascade and then uh, resonant particle interaction stochastically, and the photon gets uh, synchrotron inverse Compton runs on. And the, there is maybe even pair production and then escape. So that's kind of uh, where it represented. Um, if you if you had to use uh, second order Fermi stochastic energization to produce the power spectrum uh, of of. So this is kind of what you see on the top row is the kinetic energy of particles, uh, wave number, and photon energy. The different curves are at a different time, and different tau means different optical depths. Uh, that means uh, it's going to affect the, the, the photon. Sorry, tau means different time. I, I actually don't remember now. So, <laughs> and you can see a cascade and, and the evolution. But uh, going back to what I was emphasizing, right? So that model has been used widely by, by the space solar flare community using stochastic particle acceleration turbulence to um, accelerate electrons to make flares. We did it for Christian disk corona, uh, sulfur x-ray and hot x-ray. In recent years, things got more interesting because the anisotropy of MIT turbulence uh, was, was emphasized. And then uh, the fast modes was, was invoked, suggested as a way of scattering Gaussian grace because our finic modes uh, is perpendicular cascade, our finic modes isn't as effective. And then there are also uh, in astronomy turbulence of particle acceleration in like this limit. Uh, so the question still remains, right? So uh, what, what's the fraction of those different modes or whether they exist at all? Right, so the big uh, revelation that um, our community says, oh, you know, GIS 95 told us 
the correct radar and five paper models to us uh, the energy turbines are on as the initial topic, although the space community might have said, oh, we know that for 10, for 10 years before that. Um, uh, so what's what's their nature? And the actual community basically, this is a classic paper by Cho and Lazari and O3. They said, let's um let's really do more. So we, we know there are initial topic, but let's take a take a take a snapshot on the left. Which is a beta volume has a has a B field B zero and all the fluctuations, right? Uh, let's let's do spatial Fourier transform uh, into a K space, the K parallel and K K K curve in two direction, and and in this case they use the velocity as an example B K. It turns out um, you can write three eigenvectors, uh, arcing wave, a fast mode and slow mode. And they form a complete set. So any vector uh, in Fourier transform can be a case uh, vector can be decomposed into three composed three eigenvectors and uh, a polarization information. And you you say uh, you know I can be project this this total fluctuation into three different components. Are things fast and slow? And uh, they did that. Uh, so they take a frame. They, they decompose, they get a power. Uh, and then um, as a function of time, they can different take different frames and show how those different power evolve. So that's what they, uh, and this, this uh, many people are followed on that. So they get different, uh, several conclusions. One, um, so they, they indeed was able to separate all three wave modes, arcing, slow, and fast. And then they plot their structure function, the, the, the parallel versus perpendicular, and they, they saw the affine modes is elongated in the, in, um, it has more power in the perpendicular direction, and then they have different, slightly different parallel uh, slopes uh, as a function of k. And the uh, slow follow affine pretty closely, and, and fast modes tend to be more isotropic, as you can see from the structure function here. And in terms of in terms of the total power, predominantly is the affine modes, and then fast and slow. Uh, their fraction that depend on the turbine Mach number and then plasma beta that kind of parameters. But but their message is, you know, majority of the fluctuation is in affine modes, and those two are small, and the two compressor modes are small, and fast modes are also small. So. Again, the idea is, is going back to just using the spatial information for each frame you can, you can do this. So um, let me, let me uh, suppose you, has anyone done that experiment with a single, I mean, again, in full NAT, but in a, a single direction population of uh, shear alpine waves? The idea being, if you don't have a counter screen, you take out the cascading, as you know, and then you ought to get steepening, right? You open the door for these DNLS structures and other such things to really dominate the scene. Because if you leave, if you leave weak parallel compression open, of course, then the shear alpine waves can steepen. Was that done in these, you know, or was it always an equal population of counter steam? So, so the my my understanding is that uh, that kind of analysis was done in the incompressible limit to ah, demonstrate. You need weak compressibility to see the goodies. So, so that's one side. Now, we've done uh, so. So, I may be incomplete in whether other teams have done. This this finite k parallel, we I mean whether the affine wave will get will convert it to fat to produce the compressible limit. Mm -hmm. So um uh Ben Chandran has a has a set of papers which was looking at wave turbulence, uh, in which he he I think was showing how three modes in the wave turbulence limit that could could. Could couple with each other. Mm -hmm. Now, 
there's something called parametric decays the bridge, right? So the scenario you just described, where in, in the low beta limit, when you have a finite amplitude R fin wave propagating just one wave in one direction, mm -hmm. spontaneously go into a forward propagating slow wave and backward propagating R fin wave. Right. We've done that a lot. Right. And we've shown it both in single wave case, multi wave case, turbulence case. And so, so in real plasma, the process you are thinking about should happen, and it's probably in the codes that uh, when you have a compressible uh, MHD uh, uh, tool, that kind of process is happening. But uh, uh, you have to look for it. Right. Yeah, you have to set up the right experiment yeah. to make them together. Yeah. So the short answer in PDI, we've, we've known that happens, we've confirmed it in the in the in the other cases, I'm going to show some of the some of the fast mode study, just like what you, you mentioned. In fact, let me just actually get to that. Um, so maybe let me go back one. So now imagine <laughs> that it's blocked out. Um, I hope on the screen it's not blocked out. Yeah. Okay. Now imagine the. Uh, you not only do this in the as in the past do the decomposed fluctuation in terms of polarization property, which is spatial only. You say actually uh, let me save all the data cubes with very high time resolution, and then you can do uh, what we call four D FFT that uh, that uh, actually it, it's okay we can just okay. Um, then you can also do a uh, Fourier transform in time to get all the frequency of the fluctuation, which was not done in the previous study. I mean, there, there are some papers, I, I apologize, I didn't include it in this, all, again, all of the space community, they stopped doing that, not, not in a systematic way that will publish their paper. So then you can, you can say, let me put all the fluctuation onto a uh, dispersion plot. The vertical axis is, is omega frequency, and there is a k parallel and k per. So um, it turns out the three eigenmodes in the dispersion uh, space is this is is the R fin mode is uh, k parallel v a. That's a sheet in, in this omega versus k parallel k per plane, and slow mode. It's also a sheet, and then the fast modes actually forms a curved, curved uh, page. <laughs> so uh, isosurface. Uh, you, you sit down, you work out the dispersion ratio. That's exactly why you expire. Um, so, and then this is meant to show if we, like Pat was asking, if we put a single mode, and it's going to propagate. You do fully a 40 fully a transform, you, you, you recover its omega, you recover its k parallel, k per. And we went one step further and say, let's put in small amplitude, two modes. They, they in fact, we should get the original frequencies and all the multiples. And they, if they stay on the same branch, they should follow the isosurface here. So we've done a test for fast mode, we've done a test for 40. Arcane mode, but indeed they, they follow that. So it's kind of in the wave limit, low amplitude, small amplitude, nonlinearity is small. You get everything exactly what we expect. And then we went one step further and say, uh, what if, if this guy listens to me? Okay. Uh, let's for fun, let's make, make two fast modes. A non parallel, if you look at two fast modes, uh, K1, this is omega equals KVA, K1 plus K2, if they're along the same direction, they'll just keep on going in that K, which we see. And now here, let's say put in two fast modes actually in different K vectors, uh, they're finite and oblique, and then they in fact produce more fast modes of different K, and they spontaneously. Uh, Excited R fin modes and slow modes. The slow modes resonance scatter uh, their their angle. So here uh, the K range goes from a few to hundreds to a couple of thousand. 
you can see they cascade down into different directions, even though initially there are only two are uh, two fast modes um, put it uh, at, a, at a small pace. So you start not hurrying isotopically through the through the whole phase space because you, you only had very finite not few uh, initial case, but they start covering the broader space in case space and uh, and uh, uh, because of the the other modes are generated they, they scatter them and so so this is the we're 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 hoping to explore this more this kind of a numerical way of testing some of the weight turbulence or weak turbulence limit and um, uh, in, in the compressible regime. And this, this is actually quite interesting for some other applications, which, which um, uh, in retrospect, back in 2009, I, I, I was doing another work with a postdoc uh, with, with us. And it's on the left, it's, this is now fully kinetic simulation. So, uh, using PIT. On the left, we put in 42 modes in this small cave. So it's testing the cascade idea. So those 42 modes satisfy the velocity of dispersion relation for fast mode. They're pure fast mode and they have the correct damping, kinetic damping rates. And because they're packed inside a finite K range and they start nonlinearly intact, and then they cascaded actually into the perpendicular direction, the parallel direction. It turns out there's actually an isotropy in them. Um, and then over time, as a function of time, the kinetic damping uh, uh, cuts off some of the high K modes. So this kind of suggests the fast mode ca cascade itself may not be as isotropic as, as the fluids community consider, maybe because the coupling coefficients actually be different, strengths be different in, the, in different, it's a K-dependent. So, so at least in the kinetic regime, whether fast modes is isotropic as fluids suggested it may not be, uh, may not be the same between the two regimes. So, um, and we actually, back then, we already had the idea of doing uh, 40 FFT. And amazingly, we saw this is a fast mode dispersion, uh, the dashed curves back. Uh, and this one will be the slow modes and those are burn state modes. We saw a lot of power pop propagating, uh, uh, in populating the, uh, the fast mode branch, which uh, uh, in retrospect, we think it is all because we initialized those 42 modes with very weak, uh, I mean, the total power that's 10%, you know, shared among 42 modes here. So um, each is, uh, is a few percent. So, uh, so they are kind of in a weak limit. So they maintain the dispersion relation properly. At least that's uh, one interpretation that we have. Now, when we go to stronger driving, like um, uh, in turbulence, where uh, we're talking about a total mass number of 0.2, 0.5, um, you, you, you typically get this kind of anisotropic MHT turbulence. This is kind of very, very standard. Um, it looks so dim. <laughs> and then on the right, we show, uh, we get the, the expected par, uh, par off of K parallel and K curve. And, uh, and we get about a factor of 30 in the, in the inertia range. And then this is since this is compressible MHT. Uh, we can monitor, we can study how that turbulence and the density fluctuation correlate with plasma beta cross helicity equation of state and and uh, uh, and uh, driving. And so uh, this is a, this is a paper that's uh, we're still writing uh, for the past year. <laughs> um, I want to say you know, turns out driving. In generating compressible emission turbulence, uh, it's very tricky. You can have incompressible driving, you can have compressible driving, you can uh, have different uh, time correlations and different K range, all of which has some impact on understanding the nature of fluctuation uh, um, if you're not careful in terms of which, which, uh, which uh, frequency band of Turbulence band, uh, the K band you're looking, you're analyzing your results. I'll, I'll come to that. 
So we did a large number of runs, and here I included um, uh, a few of them just to give you an idea. Uh, I, I'm not presenting results on all of them, just, just like three of them, but we very thriving uh, in doing both uh, velocity and detail, or sometimes just velocity. The compressional uh, driving versus nearly compressed, completely compressible driving, FC0 means incompressible driving, and uh, FC0.9 is you know, predominantly com compressible driving. Then we try different, uh, this OU process that, uh, that, 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 that it's a particular way of, of, of telling you how you correlate different, different fluctuations during the driving process. And different plasma beta, different total mass number, and numerical resolution. Just just for fun, we also try cases where we we don't drive; we just initially load the system with with eigen modes that satisfy all the dispersion relation, either RP modes or fast modes. Because one of this goal here is to say, um, you know. Depending on how we reach a quasi steady state statistically of a turbulent state, um, if we want to address the question during that quasi steady state, turbulent state, could we decompose fluctuations into eigenmodes? And it seems to be, at least what we thought is, if you put in eigenmodes already, don't they all stay in with eigen modes uh, throughout? I mean, that gives yourself the best chance to, to address that. And if you have more random driving in other ways, which are not eigen, not satisfy eigen modes, maybe you don't necessarily get eigen modes in there. So that that was the thinking. So um, and and ignore the, the thoughts on the left. But in a way, we actually, you know. We get this big data cube state uh, with high time resolution. We do we do uh, 40 FFT inversion. We we'll start picking picking up power. So here is uh, omega versus k parallel. So you can get it in this is the slow mode, this is the RV, and this is the fast characteristic. You know, you kind of see the fluctuation at all three wave branches. That's satisfying in the sense that, oh, You've done something right. Uh, uh, you're supposed to get those. You do get those, uh, and so the technique is is, is great. Uh, this is beta 24, of almost 22. Um, but you start seeing things like this is very broad, right? mm -hmm. which is telling you something. You know more is going on, and uh, this is log scale. I mean, at face value, in this particular set of uh, situation, it seems to be that the slow mode is the 99%, and the RP branch and the fast branch is tiny. Uh, this is lot, right? So, you know, what's going on, right? So, uh, and this is, of course, we take a particular uh, K per, you know, KY equals zero, KZ, some finite number. And the plotting of this to parallel, what if we vary the other things? You, do, you need to count up all the different contributions. So, but nonetheless, it's very encouraging that you know you, you seem to be on track here. So this uh, is um, is kind of the what you really get when you run a big simulation, simulate, uh, save up many many frames, and do a forty FPT transfer. Inverse, and then this is omega, and you can see a huge spike from low frequency all the way up to highest frequency you resolve. This is all due to driving. This is a feature, and this is paper. This is paper parallel. The origin is kind of here. So this is low K corner, uh, high frequency axis, uh, high paper axis. I can parallelize this that way. This is again in log uh, color. You kind of see there is fluctuation propagating up the fast mode. And I think the slow presumably are there, but they're buried in a big smudge here. But again, this is because it's log power, I, I, my axis got cut off. Um, 
most 99% of R populated at the low frequency region. Nonetheless, the finite frequency is not zero. And, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's highly resolved in the sense that lots of frames capturing those low frequencies. Um, it's not because we're not resolving it. High frequency, you can argue, is harder to resolve, but low frequency, we have lots of frames. So um, also, uh, they're, they're mostly going along the k perp direction. So this was surprising to us that uh, uh, we do get some mode uh, in, the, in, the, in the eigen mode direction uh, surfaces, but low frequency, finite, and mostly k perp is that's not surprising. So, and if we, if we do different cuts through that volume on the left, we then see this slow mode, fast mode, sorry, high free mode and fast mode, and you have the most of the power constantly in there. Here we excluded the driving region, that big, uh, uh, later on, sorry, uh, this part we didn't exclude, later on analysis was going to cover that up. And this is one cut, there's another cut that's showing the issue more interesting. This is the driving, uh, this is the RFI mode. Then you have a huge amount of power. This is K-per, that's K-per, this is K-per. Uh, frequency definitely resolved, non-zero, zero is here. This is, you know, 60, 70, 80% of the power, total power. It's not slow modes, it's not RP modes, not fast modes, it's not nonlinear structure with zero frequency. Um, so this is log, right? So log nine, you know, this is, will be log nine, this will be log uh, seven, and, and others will be you know, four. So the, your, your orders magnitude goes down. And this, is, this will be the classic, uh, when you collapse the, the frequency information just in the Cape parallel to per plane, to get this non highly anisotropic structure. This is just to show that we indeed recover the, 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 the traditional anisotropic uh, 2D spatial uh, power spectrum. So, I mean, when are we going to hear the, the sacred words pressure balance structures? Um, I mean, and you know, you could look for that, right? You could you see is are those is the energy in that region of the base space, you know, of the form, you know, where pressure and, and compression balance. So the that that is one of the that's one of the candidates, right? One of the candidates, and um, but that's easy to test, right? That's why I bring it up. The the. It's an isothermal run, right. but the so we do get density fluctuation. We get uh, some so consequently because the temperature is, is constant, we do get we do get fluctual fluctuation, pressure fluctuation. So how balanced are they? I actually don't quite know how to separate that one out from the other fluctuations. Um, that's this is one challenge. The second is even if we find those, let's say, but this suggests their lifetime is not so short in a sense because the frequency is low, right? But they occupy so much power. Um, uh, why why the fluctuation decide to go there and possess finite frequency? With some some lifetime associated with it, uh, you know. I mean, I, I can think of if they stay at, at the zero frequency or nearly zero frequency, that's one solution. They just kind of sit there wherever so. And then there's some windowized waves, but this is saying they they they're not falling the, the spatial structure not falling waves, but they're, they're changing relatively with some finite frequency. So that's that's where I really would get some help trying to right. okay. yeah. yeah that's that's the big puzzle. Uh, but I would argue the dominant component, and not argue, I 
I mean quantifier, the dominant component of fluctuation are are here with finite frequency. So this last sentence is something may or may not be fully appreciated by the turbulence community for the past decades. Because uh, they're more looking at this figure. It's highly anthropotropic. And then the other community basically says, well, they're anthropotropic, but we still call them anthropotropic waves. And went on with the scattering calculation, the aggregation calculation. But we're saying, not so fast, uh, they're not truly eigenmodes. So, Do you see power being transferred between the nodes? Uh, presumably, that's that's uh, that's what's forming all those uh, power laws because they they they, sh they should have done the coupling. Now, for the different modes, it's it's harder to quantify. Uh, I don't know how to calculate the mode. Uh, Different wave mode transfer. Yeah, so I'll show the we'll show some of the structure functions coming up. Um, what what we've done we've definitely seen mode coupling by doing isolated calculation like we do two R thing modes we compress one machine and then after a while we see fast modes and slow modes being produced. We can do two fast modes to begin with, and after a while we see our thing modes slow modes. So they're definitely talking to each other. So by those standalone simulations, we see all the coupling going on. But once we we've gone we've gone into this limit, we haven't done our analysis to, to capture or quantify the different components, which which has come up here. So there are four colors here. Blues are thin, green is slow, yellow is fast, and gray is, for lack of imagination, we call it non wave. <laughs> we don't know what it's, it's referring to, 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 to this kind of thing. They don't follow those, um, uh, but they're there. That's, so that's a different color. And those are three different runs. Uh, a and C. Um, all driving is incompressible, but quickly it generates compressible fluctuation. So we, we naturally get all wave modes. Uh, uh, so A and B are incompressible driving, and C is highly compressible. But A and B is non incompressible, compressible, uh, and um, uh, B also just had both velocity and, and B field driving. Um, in doing this runs, we um, on the left is if you just have spatial decomposition, no timing part. This would be what shows our variance to do. Mm -hmm. And also uh carrot um Makawada and uh, and Nevero published a non-PRX paper a few years ago, very nice paper. But they just did the spatial decomposition. And so their conclusion would say for well, incompressible driving, um, almost 80% is R thin. Uh, slow is you know 20%, and fast is you know a few percent. And maybe with uh, with uh, highly compressible driving, you get you know, almost 20% of our thing uh, as possible. So, which is the previous conclusion that if your drive is highly compressible, you can get up to 20% of the which is great for cosmic gray transport because fast modes do wonders for you. Energize, scatter, and all that. But, so then there are two bars that are not shaded. And what we did the following, we say, let's, Cut all the driving part because the driving is, is uh, dominating energy and it's really messing up your, your mode analysis. The shaded region, they did not do that as far as I can tell. Um, the second, we say, um, uh, sorry, I'm joining a blank. There's one more thing I, I, I forgot. I'll, I'll come back to you. The, 
And what we find is as we cover all the driving part and uh, we start recovering uh, the non-load traction, the gray part to be the dominant. The, uh, the, uh, the arcing modes reduce it down to 20%. The, uh, the compressible modes adding up is a few percent. So um, if you don't cover all the driving part and that becomes the dominant, because uh, you are putting in by hand all the time and that, that becomes the dominant uh, uh, power and in that power you, you, you can decompose it into any of the three. So, so this is kind of the, the key puzzle that we build from the studies to say uh, which, which you will see it more clearly if you take the whole screen here and then every all results is, is controlled by here by this one patch because that's where you're driving it. But if you cover all the driving and the rest of it, then this is the dominant uh, power and that's not right. Like, that's that's the that's the main conclusion. So and we then did the uh, did the uh, uh, correct structure function for the par parallel horizontal curve, and for the non-wave component, fast R fin is slow. The R fin kind of slow and 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 uh, fast and slow more or less agrees with the other analysis. Of, you can see it's on isotropic R fin, it's quasi isotropic at, at least as uh, shorter wavelengths. But this non-wave component is also highly isotropic as you as you see on the take care of the curve plot. But if you do actual careful fitting, you start seeing different slopes. If we if we use um, if you this one as an example, the non-wave has a slope of three fifths, but fast and, and our fin. Our fins there, the fast is there. They have similar slopes. Um, uh, sorry, one is two third, one is one. Uh, they're, they're, they're different slopes. So all three components, um, the slope here is, is too, uh, too noisy to be confident in. So the, the non-wave and the fast and our fin actually have very different slopes. Uh, so sorry, all, all three have different slopes, which suggests Again, some of the early conclusions based on the spatial only, uh, they kind of lump together uh, the non-wave with the with the arcane. So that become the dominant uh, dominant uh, uh, contribution, and that makes them to say, "Oh, that's the three fifths. But actually, it's from the non-wave component, not from the arcane itself. When you separate separate all the non wave the R thing actually shows it, it goes like like two thirds rather than three fifths. Have you done anything like an energy breakdown of the non wave components? What do you mean by energy? Well, I mean like it, like your basic alchemy wave. You'd expect your mechanical energy and magnetic energy to be comparable. And the, you know things like that. So you do a bookkeeping and accounting. You know what's V squared, what's V squared, and you might want to think about the pressure energy as well. We have not done that. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, that's sort of what kind of, that one sick, one curious question of the beastie, right? I yes, mean, yes. We, yeah, that we've not done. That's so. So a lot of this analysis, we either choose. The other B or choose the other B square. Yeah, but I mean, the, yeah. the thing is, of course, is in that you know you want to see where it wants to go. Right? Yes, yes, yeah. So that's a, that's that's that that, we, that should be uh, doable. So that's actually very that's important. Yeah. So um, I'm running out of time, so I'll just uh, yeah. Let me skip all this. So so th this is just meant to say there is now actually Parker data. Uh, which, which is promising in the sense that they do in situ measurements, they can measure the 
velocity fluctuation at local temperature and density fluctuation. And uh, there are kind of in this regime now that's compressible MHD because the density fluctuation is 10, you know, 15%. Turbulent Mach number ranging from 21, sometimes even to one. So it's transonic, which is great for astrophysics. And then we kind of wanted to see whether there's any dependence on plasma beta, cross conicity, and uh, equation state uh, type of uh, parameters. And then test the theory of uh, simulation uh, together and um, understand the nature of the density fluctuation. So that's that's ongoing work. Let me just not dwell on that. So to conclude, um, I think this new technique, well, this new technique of doing 4D FPT analysis and carefully monitoring the driving and monitoring the uh, power residing in the non-driving region. And we find that dominant contribution is actually, uh, I write it here nearly zero frequency, but that's not accurate, it's actually finite frequency, although low frequency, non-propagating uh, RC noise, uh, unpropagating MHD waves, uh, they're, they're not, they're not propagating, they're not waves either. So um, I think this is a mystery that needs to be better understood. They they are predominantly uh, are the four are the terms that are contributing to actually to density fluctuation. That's the same analysis we need, we we can use the density fluctuation, which then there's no arithmetic fluctuation in the class and so most of the modes are not not in any of those. So so the those those non wave uh, fluctuation are the dominant contribution to the density fluctuation we see in the solar system. So that's a big statement. Um, and, and in terms of understanding the origin of this fluctuation, which by extension, whether that, that would have implication for SM density fluctuation, the great power of the observer and also the ICM is something that we want to explore as well. Those are, although those are some of the high beta regions. So um, um, the, we do need to look into the uh, pressure balance structure and the frequency information, particularly in those type of structures, interactions. And we also have plans to actually uh, do similar things for kinetic simulation. And there it will be even more so consistent in terms of uh, density fluctuation will cause uh, Landau damping that the sound modes would, uh, would be Landau damped onto the particle uh, heating, the, heating, heating the plasma. That'll be all, thank you. <laughs> How is the lifetime of the, the wave component? These things, they, they must have a characteristic lifetime, and you could determine it, of course, uh, from your frequency data, because you have two time data. How does it compare with what you might expect based on correlation times in the alpine wave turbulence? Not, not, of course, it's not the alpine wave itself, but you know, when you be, you know, the just not to be over, yeah, you to be over, yeah. of GS and all yeah. you can get a, you can get a correlation time as a function of scale. How, how different are the, the non waves from that? The fact is going this way and the uh, delta V, uh, so the time is, um. Is a delta v k per, k per right right or inverse of that right so the going this way k per is increasing but delta v goes like a slower power k per so that that frequency is increasing going this way in the nonlinear time so the time is getting longer and longer uh, sorry the time is getting shorter and shorter going this way but the frequency didn't change. So, so, so that means it's slower and slower compared to the nonlinear time over here. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's not that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, so thank you for the nice talk. 
Um, my question is about these, um, I guess, low frequency structures. If you um, simplify the uh, model, like for instance, by um, making it incompressible instead of compressible, are those still there? Um, so we, we thought about our question and uh, our codes are inherently compressible code. So we really, I think we debated among ourselves. We think we eventually decided to really, uh, is that, that's SAS, right? So to really address SAS question, it's better to use a spectral code that's incompressible and then do the same analysis. So uh, if, if there's anyone that has a good incompressible code, wants to do this process, we can share all the analysis routine and collaborate with you guys and to answer that question. We, we really wanted to answer that question as well for incompressible turbulence. We think they're there, but, but uh, uh, we're not sure. One of the reasons I might add, we're interested in that, like I was saying, we took the density data queue, which is also fluctuation, and we found the same conclusion. But presumably in the, in the, incompre in the incompressible runs, there's no density fluctuation, right? So, so how, how would those features survive or not? And our, our suggestion that uh, they are responsible for the density fluctuation may or may not be true anymore. Right? So, so we are very interested in doing that, in, in going to that limit, but we, we don't have a spectral code that, uh, that can do inverse, uh, incompressible average turbulence. So yeah, that, that's, um, that's the situation right now. Sas, did you hear my reply? Uh, yeah, I did. Thank you. Yeah, I guess as, as an experimentalist, um, I, I don't have um, codes, period. So you're already far ahead of me. <laughs> Maybe you can twist the arms of your friends who has such a code. What does the structure look like if you try a visualization? I hate to resort to color pictures, but. So I stare at those um, movies, right? I'm just, just so I'm not sure you did. It's, it's not, this be an older movie, but. Uh, So those are our high curve structure structure, but if you, if you fix your eyes on those, they evolve. But maybe I should maybe in the in the Fourier space, there are uh, I think they have certain K perp structure where the sunlight has much longer, mm -hmm. but it may not be the may not be a particular stru structure not a long time because as you can see, it's gonna go to right, it's gonna change. Let me start back up here. See, see. So there is a distinct possibility you are being free food by the by the hackee property. That hackee we would say for k per twenty, let's say uh, there is a finite power, power some low frequency. What it probably really means is I always find enough structures with similar similar power at a k per equals twenty band, and then and they live for in that sense, statistical, uh, I mean, over population, but, but any good kind of feature is a capable of 20 might get, get torn apart. 
ว่าแล้วคิดอยู่คุณค่อยๆเป็นยาวิทาสนอยโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโ